everybody, Catherine O'Connell here. This episode of Senegal in a Word is about livestock. One of the first things I noticed upon arriving in Senegal is the presence of cows, donkeys, sheep, goats, chickens, geese, everything you can imagine everywhere, in the roads, in people's houses, uh, roaming around people's compounds, everywhere. In an underdeveloped nation such as Senegal, livestock help streamline agricultural processes in the production of agricultural goods such as corn, millet, sorghum, rice, etc. According to the World Factbook, agriculture makes up for about 17% of Senegal's GDP as of 2017. However, about 77.5% of Senegal's labor force is involved in agricultural activities. In a country where over half of its inhabitants live in rural areas with limited access to urbanized areas, livestock are also very advantageous uh, as they are easy to take care of even in rural conditions. Aside from the obvious benefits of animal husbandry, there is another huge benefit to owning animals in Senegal and that is because animals are worth a lot of money in Senegal. Because, as I mentioned, over half the population of Senegal lives in rural areas with limited access to urbanized areas, animals act uh, in a way as a currency. For example, I live in a family that is about 15 kilometers directly north of an urbanized area. Although I am relatively close to an urbanized area with access to banks, um, it's not always as easy as getting in a car or getting in some a, a bus to get to the city. In fact, the most reliable form of transportation in and out of my village is with a charrette, a horse or donkey drawn carriage. Therefore, my host family opts to have a lot of goats and sheep and donkeys and a few horses and a lot of cows in order to ensure their wealth so that they always have access to their wealth. It's not somewhere in a bank that they're not sure of. It's not being taken out unknowingly. It's not physically in money form that could be lost or burnt in an area that is susceptible to a lot of bushfires. It's in another physical form, a living, breathing physical form. Therefore, if my host grandma gets sick and needs to go to the hospital unexpectedly, and she has a lot of hospital bills, we might go sell one of the sheep or we might go sell one of the cows or whatever to be able to pay for her hospital bills. I might also be thinking that these animals serve as a source of food, but that's not necessarily true. We have, my family has a lot of animals and only on holidays do we ever eat our livestock. Another way these livestock are utilized in daily life, especially in rural areas, is for a bride cost. So this in Western culture might be seen as, as comparable to a dowry. When a man asks a woman and her family if they could be married, a price is settled upon between the two families that is to be given from the man's family and him especially to the woman's family to compensate them for the the woman's work that their family is losing her contribution to the family the the amount of work that she does every day and has been doing every day to help the family such as doing laundry cooking um, pulling water uh, taking care of other people's kids in the family etc um, this bride price is meant to compensate the woman's family for that loss that she that they're now going to experience when she moves into the man's household um, once they get married. Sometimes these bride costs are settled with just money, especially in more urbanized areas as well. These bride prices are settled with just cash but in the past a lot of these bride prices were settled with livestock and even still today some communities still um, will use livestock to settle the bride cost or it'll be a combination of both livestock and money. The utilization of animal husbandry also differs among the different ethnic groups in Senegal so certain ethnic groups tend to um, 
practice animal husbandry a lot more than other ethnic groups. And this can be because of cultural beliefs among one's ethnic group, but it also can be due to the fact that some ethnic groups tend to be distributed um, along much more rural areas and have not relocated into more urban areas. So in this case, it would be much more advantageous for said ethnic group to remain using their livestock as their source of currency or their primary source of currency. Whereas other ethnic groups, maybe smaller ethnic groups who've primarily relocated into more urbanized areas um, may have switched over completely or at least partly to um, using banks and physical currency, um, this West African franc, as their main form of currency um, with which they do their business. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. And if you got anything to add, please send it my way. Thanks. Just a little hungry hippo, huh?